Hello, welcome to Bob Log video diary garden walk in the snow. I'm aware I haven't done one in the snow before, and this is not the height of the snow. The snow came last Wednesday, this is Sunday and Thursday, and there's been no fresh snow since then. But the, the snow is compacted and it's been freezing, and there's a frozen crust on the top of the snow. But it still gives you an idea of how a garden looks in the snow, how, how things are stripped back to the bare structures in a sense. The distraction of all the little plants, many of which are already underground recovering and from their growth and building up before they come back up in the spring. So it's the, the white stuff, as I say it was it's forecast to the weather to turn again tomorrow, Monday, when apparently there's a milder, relatively milder front coming across that's going to turn to rain. But I always like how the, the troughs look. You know, if your trough looks flat in the snow, it's because it is flat. It should look nice and high with built up and all these, you get to see the little mountains that are in the troughs. But it's just a, a walk around. This is about midday, just coming to midday, so the, this is the height the sun gets in the sky. In these northern climates, we don't get huge hours of daylight. Half past two it can start to become dusk. But the snow has receded. If any of you read the Bull blog this week you'll see pictures of the of the Japanese lantern. The, the, the swept shape like that is often called snow catcher shape because it does catch and retain the snow when it falls but it's gradually disappeared. What do we see in the plants? Well, the hellebores, they've still got their leaves. We see some of the, some of the ferns have got leaves. There's a poor ever Silmizia in there, weighed down with snow. And just the, the dry stems, lovely yellow structural stems. I like to leave stuff in the garden through the winter because it's great for the wildlife and the birds. And of course, I've been feeding the birds. They feed on the berries. You can see some berries lying down there. We've a lot of berry trees, but a lot of the easy berries to get and the ripe ones have gone. And the presence of leaf, leaf fall in the garden, leaving leaves and piles around, because the birds will scatter the leaves as they forage looking for invertebrates and some of the micro fauna in, that's in there that they'll eat and of course we scatter seed and cut up fruit and feed them apples and pears but you can see how they and when they've been foraging they've been scattering the ripping the moss off the rocks and scattering the leaves out onto the path plant wise there's not so much to see but I mean we can still find coming through the snow now, these were completely covered in snow on Thursday and Friday. Cyclamen leaves and the and the black grass, the leaves of some of the tougher plants are there. Just wandering round the, the garden, the lovely stems. I love this. this is a lovely, one of our favourite trees in the garden. This it's an acer, but look at the lovely striped bark in the moisture going up. Oops! I nearly fell over there, heading backwards. We've got this multiple stem that we trained it from an early age. We cut it so that it would produce 
multiple stems going way up above our heads. As I come round the see some of the bonsais and trees and pots and feature rocks. Little pine in a in a pot in the pond, completely frozen over and covered in snow. It'd be hard put to know there's water under there. The pond doesn't freeze all the way to the bottom, it's about a three quarters of a metre to a metre deep, so There's the really tough and very welcome. I enjoy it and, and it, I know that some find it uh, runs about too much in their garden. The Aero Metallicum, the Pictum form, the, the leaves. Really nice. And here are the couple of trees that we cut down a not, quite a number of years ago but we couldn't dig the roots out and it also helps fold up the old rickety fence. I see there's an, a real cluster of um, mushrooms. Not my old oh, still some kind of fungi. We have a lot of fungies in the garden because it's a very natural soil we live. And what I do with these is I drill holes into them and that's for the for the solitary bees and stuff like that to go in and make nests. So always thinking about the wildlife in the garden. The new bed by the pond here is familiar, the Ramondas. The one I meant to split up this corner here, I meant to split that in the late summer, early autumn and didn't get round to it, but I'll do it in the spring. Or even in the winter if there's a mild spell, I can do it then as long as there's no frost. But you can see how that's the the pines and the rhododendrons, the troughs, everywhere. I look, I can see little things down here and a cyclamen poking out under there as the rhododendrons and shrubs grow over the trees around the pond stand out and against the snow cover. It just gives a different view of the garden and the landscape indeed and going around. Everything's transformed in white. I have heard it said that all gardens look the same under snow. But they don't. If you've got interesting features, little hummocks, little plants, and shaped structures, they'll st it'll still look more interesting under snow, as the snow humps up over them. Everything we've got in the garden really is proven to be cold hardy to the depths of where we got. We, we went down to minus 11 and a half, minus 12 the other day in the garden. And the, it's hardly come above freezing. I think feeling the air temperature is just at zero at the moment. The wind chill. We always get a wind chill in Aberdeen coming off the sea. It makes it feel significantly colder. There's the... Um, I don't know if this is going to focus here on the... the allium seed heads and the seed heads of the... erythronium sticking up there. A big clump of... Silmizia walkeri. 
and there's the come around this side the paper bark the Acer be uh, not Acer Betula Utilis the white see if I put my hand here just how big a trunk is it's it's a huge beast of a tree but what it does is it sheds its bark lovely paper bark, lovely colour inside, and then white on the outside. This is probably an adaptation of plants and trees that grow in areas that are wet and where you get a lot of moss and lichens and stuff growing on the bark which could smother the tree. So it, it sheds its same, sheds its bark and by doing that cleans itself up and it will. It's, not the time to do it, but coming into the, the spring, all this old bark will fluff off to reveal the new bark underneath. More seed heads there. But it is, it's just enjoying the garden at all times of year. There's not a lot of work we can do at this time. The snow stopped me getting more clearing up done. Just walk round the in the glass houses, the bulb houses are frozen down and I don't know. We may lose some bulbs through the cold and the frost this year. They're all flattened and frozen, lying flat on the surface. The, hopefully they'll survive because of the high cost of electricity and the shortage of electricity in the grid. We haven't had any of the protection cables on this year. So the bulbs will just have to take their chance. Over there we feed the birds with the feeders and you can see where they've been digging through the leaf to, and blackbirds there just now and goldfinch up in the feeder. They're all there and we love the birds in the garden and we do as much as we can to garden for the wildlife that we get as for ourselves. You can see how they've been scattering the leaves as they forage about under the feeders. And I guess that's where I'll stop. Virtually walked around the a bit of the garden. So thank you very much if you've joined me on this winter walk in the snow. I hope next year to do a few, be more regular with my videos and. I hope to maybe do one every month, although no, not guaranteed, but most of the time, if I get the time in this stuff, I'll do a video a month for next year. So thanks very much for joining me, and I'll see you the next time if you join me in January, February as we go into 2023. Bye for now.